Hello YouTube and welcome to Retrobeard. Uh, today's video, we're in the shed um, and we've got some unboxing to do. Um, first of all, I've got a couple of uh, surprises or things that people have sent, doing a few swaps and things like that. Um, so I'm going to start off with those um, and then I've got two or three other little parcels as well that have arrived. Um, not 100% sure what is in what um, what is in what package, but only one way to find out. Knife in hand. Unfortunately, there's no red wine today, so I've just had to do with uh, a McDonald's instead. So, I'm going to crack on with number one. Um, this is from my mate Danny Harrison, who is a uh, press start gaming. Um, I'll stick a link to his channel down below. Might even try putting one of these um, one of these cards in the top corner here um, with a link to his channel, so you can maybe just check him out. Lovely lad. He's got some great content on there. Hopefully, he'll be um, getting back into things and uploading some new stuff soon. So, hint, 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 hint. Nudge, nudge. Wink, wink. So, um, anyway, right. Let's get stuck into what he said, guys. So. Let's see what we've got here. We have had a lot of conversation, so I am pretty aware of what's, what's, what's coming. Um, but still, very happy to see this one. I've been waiting for this one. Um, I tried to pick it up a couple of times uh, recently, and that is The Simpsons. So, happy to get, is it Simpsons versus the Space Mutants on the Game Gear? I'm gonna um, um, maybe take a photo of the Game Gear collection. I'll add that in, maybe in the top corner or something like that, so you can see where, where we're heading with it. Got quite a few. Um, I have got a draw somewhere with them all in, but I don't, oh, here it is here. There's a couple of Game Boy games in there as well, but that is the Game Gear collection at the minute. So that's another one added to that. So thank you, Danny. Um, I've got a couple of dupes as well that I'll be, um, that'll be sending back to him. And then we've done a couple of swaps for PlayStation. And um, probably one of my favourite um, puzzle games on the um, on the PlayStation 1 was uh, was Tomb Raider. And here we have Tomb Raider 3, which really was a superb game. Um, <sighs> yeah, you're looking for artefacts, you've got puzzles, you're underwater, you're pushing things around. Honestly, this is, this. It, I think it's aged pretty well. A lot of 3D games, um, from the PlayStation 1 era, don't, haven't really aged too well, a bit blocky and jerky, but I tend to find that the Tomb Raider games um, have aged not bad at all. So thanks Danny, we will be adding that to me ever-growing collection of PlayStation 1 games, along with my favourite rally game. I like this one better than Colin McRae on the, um, on the PS1. Don't slam me down for that, everyone's got their own opinions, everyone has got their own, you know, what they prefer, but for me, this was the one, V Rally. I, I I did, I love this game. Um, fastest thing on the PlayStation, Edge magazine. Nine out of 10 from official PlayStation magazine. V Rally from Info Games. Um, you've got the Toyota Corolla. Uh, you've got the Subarus. You've got uh, Mitsubishi. It's all there. It's all there, guys. This is a cracking game. So I look forward to playing that. I will get round to playing these eventually. Now, I'm not too sure what this is here. Ah, yes. Absolute cracking game as well. <laughs> I must say this is, all, this is because I have been speaking to him, so I do have an idea of what he's sending. Just in case you're wondering what's uh, going on in the background here, this is uh, La Abbey de Mort, which is um, this game here. Absolute cracking game which uh, is hopefully going to load up in the background. That's good timing, isn't it? <laughs> right, I best get cracking with this video so I can get playing. Uh, anyway, so back to this. This is on PlayStation 2. Um, I had the first one. I've not played the second one. It, as you know, uh, well into like, zombie games, stuff like that. So uh, when this did, came, this did come out, I did get the first one. I think by the time the second one came out, um, I'm not sure if I still had a PlayStation uh, 3 at that point. So I've never played this one. But here we have Dead Rising, or Dead Rising 2. I mean, come on, he's got, what is that? Is that like a chainsaw there? Uh, I'm not sure what's on the other side. Chainsaw on one side, something that's pretty naughty on the other end. He's swinging that around, you're killing zombies. Oh man, 
some good uh, screenshots on the back there as well and just kind of stop the sun from shining we're actually using real sunlight haven't got any lights on today um so you can see me in my natural beauty <laughs> and last but not least sticking with the same kind of games actually i did know this one was coming massive thanks to danny he knows um i've been getting into I've been getting into gamecube partially due to Sion as well He's kind of um, pretty much funding me uh, GameCube collection between him and Danny. I think I've already bought like one or two games. Um, but one um, series game that is my favourite by far is, of course, um, Resident Evil. And Danny's chipped in to help us out with uh, my collection towards the GameCube by sending me Resident Evil Zero on the GameCube. Uh, Set in uh, 1998, the day before the deadly virus is unleashed on Raccoon City, um, which I think uh, before Raccoon City, I can't remember if that's well. Resident Evil One's in the mansion. Resident Evil Two is is more Raccoon City. So this must be said after Resident Evil One, but before Resident Evil Two. I'm, I'm thinking that's where we're going with this. So there we go again, guys. Um, Resident Evil Zero on the GameCube. Just uh, getting added to the ever growing collection now this one here this is a gift um let's just have a look inside i just want to make sure that this is what i'm thinking about so as i was saying um yeah this one um is from uh, james bundle um on part of the hit squad collective um I was just checking me the collection that I've got and the ones I've got and I'm pretty much in numerical order we're getting there anyway but there was a couple of the the lower number like the what you would class as the easier games to get um that I haven't got so um I put up I just put up a post asking if anyone had these games you know more than willing to, to buy them pay the going rate whatever that may be um yeah and he got back to me um and not only did he have like one of the games I wanted, but he also had another game that wanted, and he also refused to accept any payment whatsoever. Here we go. Two games in here that he sent me, free of charge completely. Um, so yeah, I owe him one, and um, I have one Spectrum game that he might be interested in. So um, we'll see how that goes quite sure what his, uh, what his list is but anyway the game that I did ask him for was the Great Escape um, isometric game uh, released on all three formats only ever played it on the Commodore 64 I almost completed it once or did I complete it once it was so long ago um, not a lot of many people have completed this game um, and as you can probably tell by some of my playing my game playing skills um, I find it hard to believe that I actually completed it myself but um, anyway this game is uh, The Great Escape so that's um, complete on all three systems now which is great um, it really is it, it, it's an excellent game and um, I'm genuinely looking forward to playing this um, I always find that the Spectrum and the Amstrad um, always seem to do isometric games pretty well um, and they're always a lot smoother than the Commodore 64 although um, sometimes we have issues with um, scroll and things like that but on the isometrics they're always like a uh, uh, like every screen is a new page it doesn't it doesn't scroll so it means that the Amstrad can do it pretty pretty awesome as well um, and that is in absolutely fantastic condition um, the box is perfect there's not a mark on it um, and the same goes for this other one that you sent me as well, which I needed, and that is uh, Shaolin's Road. So Shaolin's Road is sports number 12. Um, I'm not sure if this is a good game or not, I've never played it. Um, and it's always worrying on the back when it hasn't got any magazine scores or anything like that written on there. So I'm thinking possibly this is not a great game. Um, Sports 12, so it's going to be a while before we get to that. Um, on the Hit Squad Collective, I'll put a link at the end of the um, not the Hit Squad Collective, so even the Hit Squad Collection um, videos that I'm doing. Um, I'm going to do one to ten in arcade, sport, uh, and movies, um, just to kind of mix it up a bit. Otherwise, you know, um, doing all the arcades and then all the sport, yeah, I, I want to mix it up just a little bit, so um, that's how we're going to do it. 
so that'll probably be still at least probably six months away if not longer so now we're moving on to um what looks like an ebay purchase i would imagine there so let's have a look and see what we've got here I can pretty much tell by the by the shape of the box what it's going to be. Or for what it's going to be. And here we go, guys. This is Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. This was the first movie I ever went to the cinema um, with my dad. And we went to see Indiana Jones. Um, so it's got a lot of nostalgia for me. Um, the game itself, I've never played. Um, the screenshots on the back it does actually look like a decent game but you can't always judge a game by its cover or by its screenshots at least um there's a bit of tear on the box there um but we have got the manual although it looks like someone sprayed tea all over it or something like that um and the cartridge looks pretty clean as well that looks in good nick so i'm happy with that maybe try and find a new box for it like the box uh, the box certainly looks a bit rough Bizarrely as well, on the on the tank there, it hasn't got the Nazi flag. Well, I just wonder whether they're not allowed to print that on because it was a game or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, right, motoring on. Got this one here, which looks more like um, I think it's drugs would come in or something like that. If you've ever watched Narc Wars, get stuck into it with a knife. Ugh. And yeah, we've got them two Master System games in here. I don't think any of them will be as good a bargain as um, Double Dragon. But anyway, oh my god. Yeah, it's going to take a bit more knife action to get into that. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I've seen this one going a few times, and for the Game Gear as well. Um, I don't think it's uh, such a great game, but... It was for the right price, it was only a few pounds, and that is George Foreman's KO Boxing. It's a pretty big unit, like, and when you're considering, I think he was well into his 40s when he made his comeback, and, and I think he got a heavyweight title again. But obviously, I suppose people nowadays know him more for, um, for his grill, which I'm a great believer in, I use them all the time, pretty much daily. Um, there was also another game here, which is bizarre because um, I only bought one. Uh, yeah, um, it's in a box without a cover. But the game is Speedball 2, which is cracking, absolute belt again. Absolutely adored that game on the um, on the Amiga. Um, I enjoyed Speedball 1. Speedball 2 was just so much better. I mean, there's not wrong with Speedball 1, but Speedball 2. There's an absolute cracker. Okay, so this one is from Oxfam. Oxfam Online. Um, ever wondered why you don't see many as many games in Oxfam anymore? It's because I've got their own online shop. So, yeah, get yourself a look at that, guys, and see what they've got on there. Um, they have got an eBay shop as well, which is where this one came from. So, with me getting into the GameCube, um, more. <laughs> uh, I watched a couple of videos um, about maybe what type of GameCube games I would enjoy playing. Um, and in a few of the top tens, um, this game cropped up a couple of times. And yeah, if you, if you know what type of games are like, then uh, you'd probably be able to guess this one. But I, I just had to go for it. And that is Eternal Darkness. It just sounds like a good game as well, doesn't it? Sanity's Requiem. Is it real or is it only in your head? Prepare, prepare for an epic psychological thriller. Nothing is as it seems. So, some great screenshots on the back there. Some worried looking dudes, a skull there and some bird. Sorry, bird, some lass, um, I don't know, killing somebody or something. Anyway, um, looked like a good game. Uh, it's complete with manual, everything in there. So, again, the GameCube collection is starting to take place. So last but not least is this one. I think I know what this is. And if it is what I'm thinking it is, there's a bit of a story here. Just a bit, not much really. Probably not even that interesting, but hey, never mind. 
got to talk about something, haven't I? So let's get stuck into there. It's well packaged, you guys. Seriously, if you've never played uh, Abbey uh, De Mort, you should definitely give it a shot on the uh, on the Commodore 64. It's a cracker. It's short. It is a short game, so don't be expecting, you know, once you get there, used to the controls, etc. Don't be expecting to be playing it for um, for weeks on end. You'll probably complete it within a day. So this is a game gear. As you're aware, I've already got a game gear, but um, this boxed game gear came up for sale for £28. Um, now, I've seen the boxes go for like 40, 50, 60 quid sometimes, and this is a boxed, broken game gear, um, which costs £28. So, uh, I only want it for the box. I'm not really a massive box collector, but when I've seen I could buy buy this and then probably sell on the, the, the knackered uh, game gear for pretty much the price that I bought it. I thought, well, that's a bit of an no-brainer. So that wasn't until I told me a Danny I bought it. <laughs> now, he wants me to try and repair this because he's after a game gear. Um, so I was like, well, do you know what? Okay, let's give it a go. I've never tried it before. Um, I'll probably start with the capacitors, um, things like that. Obviously, I'll turn it on and see what's actually wrong with it first. But um, let's have a look inside. Box is in good condition. There's a bit of um, bit furry around the edges on the corners, but all in all, it is in good condition. Inside we've got the polys, which are complete. I'll try not to wreck them like what I did with the um, with the last ones. So here we go, guys. Inside game gear, which is. Spotless, absolutely spotless. Got the manual, and we've even got the game that I came with, which obviously we've already got, but nice touch that, nice touch. And then we have some bits and bobs here, which look like uh, battery replacement parts. So um, maybe someone's already tried to fix it. Maybe it already comes with them normally. I don't actually know. Um, but yeah, I'll put some batteries in that and uh, we'll fire her up and we'll see what's knackered. Or, well, we'll try and have a good guess at it anyway. Um, and we'll see what we can do with that. But I thought that was a good little bargain. And um, hopefully if I can get it working, um, I'll pass on that bargain to me mate, Danny. So uh, yeah, that's about it guys, um, well, I have got a, a, another pickups video coming soon, um, but it's the part two of the Hit Squad um, pickups that I've been doing, um, and then we've got a, a, a large um, well, yeah, a, a large box which I still haven't opened yet, that's still there, I think it's just because I'm dreading the hard work that's going to come from it, but um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna have a look through these Game Gear games and um, see see what we've got and uh, get all this get all this stuff sorted out. Uh, and then I'm gonna have a game on the Abbey de Mort. And uh, yeah, definitely give that a shot, guys, if you haven't already. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, that's it for today. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Um, it's great to see you guys come back and uh, any comments below or you know anything that you think I should be looking for or. Um, I don't know, anything of interest in the video, just give us a shout, let us know. Um, I always try and answer everyone's comments back. Um, it's not always immediate um, with work and family commitments, etc. Um, but yeah, hope you guys are keeping safe. Um, and that's it. So from the Retro Shed, from uh, Retro Beard in Inverness, and in a wet Inverness, it's, uh, it's goodbye. So take care, guys, and catch you next time.